Hi everyone, and welcome to House of Vining. I'm Ivy, and I'd like to discuss an important topic with you that has a lot of control over the final outcome of anything you'll ever sew, and that is fabric grain. In this video, I'll be identifying the names and behaviors of all the different fabric grains, as well as discussing why knowing about them is so important in the world of sewing. For starters, what is grain? Grain is the general term that we use to define any overall direction of our fabric. The grains that I'm about to identify for you are more classically observed in woven fabrics, so I'll be pointing them all out on a piece of muslin laid out on the table. Before identifying any of the actual grains, I want to point out something called the selvage. The selvage is the name that we use for the finished edges that run all the way down the length of the fabric on both the left and right sides. We always want to know where the selvage is because it kind of serves as like the North Star for identifying all the different directions. If we know where our selvage is, then from there we can figure out what direction is what grain. Once we know where the selvage is, the first grain that we can go ahead and identify is the lengthwise grain. The lengthwise grain is the overall direction of the fabric that runs parallel to the selvages on both sides. Other terms for lengthwise grain that you may hear used are the straight of grain, straight grain, or even sometimes we just say the grain. Even though there are other grains involved that I'll be identifying in a moment, if you hear somebody say the grain, it's always referring to the lengthwise grain. 90 degrees to the lengthwise grain, running across the width of the fabric, we have the crosswise grain. Then, any grain of the fabric that is not perfectly in the lengthwise or crosswise grain directions, we refer to as the bias. Bias is technically any sort of diagonal grain of the fabric. So you can see I have both of these bias indicators right here, but there is a very specific direction on the bias that we usually want to identify the most, and that's called the true bias. The true bias is the grain of fabric that sits at a perfect 45 degree angle off of both the lengthwise and crosswise grains. Now that we know the names of the different grains, we also have to observe the behaviors of all of them. If I come to my lengthwise grain right here and sort of tug on my fabric in that direction, I can feel that there is little to no give in the fabric. But then if I come along the crosswise grain and pull on the fabric, it actually does have a little bit of give in that direction. Notice how I'm not using the term stretch here at all, and that's because we usually reserve the term stretch for knit fabrics. So when we're talking about wovens, we can lightly just call it give, or the more technical term is elongation. So we have no elongation in the lengthwise grain direction, but we have a little bit in the crosswise grain direction. Lastly, if I was to come and pull on the fabric along the bias, I'll see that there actually is a lot of give and flexibility. And the true bias itself is known for having the absolute most give if I was to pull on the fabric in that direction. Even if it's a little bit hard for you to see the behavior of the fabric in this video, I definitely invite you to try this at home and get really familiar with how the fabric feels when you pull it on all the different grains. Because eventually you may have a section of fabric that is missing the selvage and you wanna still be able to identify the different grains without its presence. And you can usually do so by simply pulling on the fabric and feeling for how it behaves. The reason it's so important to know about the different fabric grains is that we need to purposely make use of all these different grain properties while we're creating clothing, both while drafting the initial pattern and while cutting the pattern from fabric so that the finished garment ends up hanging and behaving properly on the body in the end. Most of the time in tailored garments, the garment is created with the intention of the lengthwise grain of the fabric running parallel with the body. Remember that that's kind of like the strongest direction of the fabric. So when we have the lengthwise grain running vertically, it's almost kind of fighting gravity in the garment. Imagine if I was to make a, like, let's say a skirt and I cut that pattern on the fabric with the crosswise grain running parallel with the body, then over time, 
My garment would sort of sag and get stretched out of shape at the bottom because we have the direction of the fabric that has a little bit of give running vertically. So that's why most of the time we want to have that lengthwise grain direction running vertically in a garment. There's some exceptions to this, particularly when we want to make use of the bias and all of its properties of flexibility. Maybe some of you have heard of a bias cut dress before. In a bias cut dress, the pattern is cut from the fabric in a way so that the true bias direction, that 45 degree angle, is running parallel with the body. And that actually kind of aids in giving the garment a lovely drape and a more beautiful flow. When you're working with a sewing pattern that you're gonna cut out of fabric, you may notice a marking on all of the pieces that we refer to as the grain line. Not to be confused with the grain, meaning the overall direction of the fabric, the grain line is the name of the actual marking that's on every pattern piece, and its purpose is to tell you what angle that pattern piece needs to sit on the fabric when you cut it. As I look at these two pattern pieces right here, these are basically the two front sections of a princess line bodice, and you'll see each pattern piece has a long double-ended arrow marking on it. That double-ended arrow is the grain line, and it's there to tell me what direction this pattern piece needs to sit on the fabric when it's cut. Even though we've identified all these different grains, and you'll see all these arrows all over the place, when we're looking at the grain line on a pattern piece, it is only ever referencing the lengthwise grain, okay? As you go to place a pattern, you need to place it on the fabric so that the grain line is sitting perfectly parallel to the lengthwise grain of the fabric. And that usually means also making sure that it's just parallel with the selvage of the fabric. Sometimes it may be tempting as you're laying out a pattern to take one piece and turn it in this direction. Maybe it'll make better use of your fabric and fit in a little bit better, but when we do this, we're placing it on the incorrect grain, and that's where you're gonna end up with bad fabric behavior like we discussed earlier with the skirt example. So the grain lines are all there to tell you what direction to place your pattern pieces when you cut them from fabric. And again, they are always only referencing the lengthwise grain, and that's why sometimes we refer to the lengthwise grain as simply the grain. Now that you know about the different fabric grains, if you'd like to see how this information can apply to your next sewing project, then be sure to check out my video on laying out and cutting patterns on grain. For all the pattern makers out there, I have some additional information for you. Now that we know about the different fabric grains, we need to also talk about paper grains. When we're drafting patterns, there's usually a couple standard types of paper that will be involved. One of them is dot paper, also called numerical dot paper. That's the drafting paper that we usually use to create our first patterns on. And there's also manila, which is sort of the heavyweight cardstock-like paper that is used to transfer completed patterns and blocks onto. Both pattern dot paper and manila have a grain to them, and they both correlate exactly to the grains of our fabric. Let's take a look at our dot paper for a moment. Here's a section of numerical dot paper used for drafting our first patterns. And I've gone ahead and already identified the lengthwise and crosswise grains of the paper. As it comes unrolled, you can see that there's also this finished edge to the paper, which is basically like the selvage of the paper. When I have that selvage of the paper placed parallel to the selvage of the fabric, you can then see that the direction we identify as the lengthwise grain of the paper is also the direction that is parallel to the selvages. And then the opposite direction, running 90 degrees from our lengthwise grain, is our crosswise grain of the paper. I didn't identify the bias on our dot paper because it's not really often that we have to take that into account we usually just need to know where the lengthwise grain direction of our dot paper is as we're beginning a pattern because we want to also make sure that our pattern pieces, as they draft them, are sitting in the correct grain direction of our paper. This is all because we want to be sure that this principle of grain 
travels down through all the stages of the garment making process. That means the grain direction of all of our papers needs to be consistent with the grain direction of the fabric from beginning to end. If I was going to draft a pattern starting with a pattern block, I can see that my block is already labeled with a grain line. And as I go to trace that block on my dot paper, I want to have the block's grain line running in the lengthwise grain direction of my paper. I would never begin a pattern with my block turned like this because that's placing the grain line in the crosswise grain direction of the paper and it's not consistent with our grain line principle that needs to carry down through all the steps of the garment. So my pattern would always begin in this direction because the block has the grain line placed parallel with the body. Now, let's say I've already completed my first draft on my dot paper. I've worked out all the kinks and I've decided I'm ready to finalize this pattern by transferring it onto Manila. I'll want to be sure that as I transfer it to the Manila, the grain direction of our Manila is consistent with the grain direction of our dot paper and our fabric. As I unroll my Manila from its roll, lining up the finished edge of the manila in the same direction as the finished edge of my dot paper and my selvage of my fabric, I can see that the lengthwise grain and crosswise grain are all consistent. And at the end of the day, what we're aiming for when we create our patterns is consistency throughout the whole process. Now that we have a better understanding of fabric grain and why it's so important, grab your scissors, grab your sewing machine, and go make amazing things. I'll see you next time.